Hey guys, how's it going? Welcome back to the channel. Back today with something a little bit different. We're doing a, obviously, live video. Uh, it's basically I'm going to be doing my Premier League predictions. Obviously, you see a lot of a lot of YouTubers do this, picking their teams, putting them in where they think they're going to finish. I thought I'd do myself because I mean a lot of people that I've seen, I feel differently to. I mean I do have some quite out there predictions, but maybe that's what will make this video a little bit a little bit more fun. So let's do it. So basically, I'm going to go from the bottom all the way up to the top. And at the end of this season, we're going to come back to this video. We're going to have a little look and see how well I did. So basically, the scoring is going to work. If I put a team to finish 10th and they finish 11th, that gets you one point because I'm one point away from where they finished. And basically, it's golf scores. You're trying to get the lowest you can. So if I get every team in exactly the right spot, that'll be a zero. I don't think that will work like that because, I mean, that would be a hell of a good prediction if I did. But I don't think I will. So let's just see how well I do. And also let me know in the comments what you think about my predictions. Obviously, I'm going to upset some people by putting them in a rele relegation or putting them lower than they think. But yeah, let me know what you think, guys. And let's get into this. Right, starting off, number 20, Ipswich Town. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. I know the, the dream's there. We all want Ipswich to do well. We all think they're... Like they're going to be the new loot in their small club, get into the Premier League. But let's be honest, they don't have a team for the Premier League. As of recording this, they've just got Calvin Phillips on loan, which I mean, I think that's a very good fit for him. I think he'll do really well there. But looking at the rest of their squad, like where are the goals coming from, firstly? Like there's just no other real star, star players in there. I know they've signed Hutchinson, they've signed DeLap. But still, that's more building for the future, I think, than they're building for this year. I think they're sort of expecting to go down. So, yes, Ipswich Town, my bottom team. 19th, we're putting... Dun, dun, dun. Wolves. Yep, I know. Everybody you've seen probably has put the top... The three that's come up to go back down. Not in mine. Number 19, Wolverhampton Wanderers. They've lost Pedro Neto, firstly, basically their sort of star player. And they've just sort of, the past four or five years, they've just been going, whoa. So I see that carrying on, that little decline in, in form. And yeah, again, no Neto. They've just, I don't know, they're just, their squad doesn't seem strong enough in every area, essentially. I feel like there's still going to be a couple more movements. I reckon Ike Nuri's probably going to go. I reckon um, that midfielder Gomez is probably going to leave as well. So, so I mean, where are they going to get stuff from? They've not really made any signings this year either. They've got a Kilman, of course, to West Ham. Yeah, they're making some sales and not replacing them. I know, obviously, it's probably to do with FFP. They're trying to get the money back in because I know... They're probably a little bit behind. But still, I don't see Wolves having a strong enough squad to stay up. I think they're going to be relegated this year. And I think they're going to finish 19th. 18th position. This is where it really, really got difficult for me. Because I, I, I knew Ipswich were going to go. I have. I just think Wolves just... They're, they've been on the decline. I reckon they're going to keep declining. 18th, the last team to go down. It was between sort of three or four teams for this. The team I've ultimately gone for is Fulham. Yes, I know. Not Leicester, not Southampton. Fulham. Again, similar to Wolves. They've sold Palina. They've sold Tosin, Adar, B-O-U, however you say his name. They've not replaced either of them, really. They've got Smith Rowe in, which I think is a very good signing for them. I think he will he'll actually have sort of a star performance this year for them. But I don't think he'll do enough to keep them up. I don't think Rodrigo Muniz is gonna play it anywhere near like he did last year. I don't feel like the defence is strong enough without Tossin. The midfield without Polina, you're looking at maybe Lukic to step up a bit more, but I don't see him filling that role. 
So uh, realistically, unless they get sort of two or three more players in through this window, I don't see them staying up. Or if they do, they'll be very, very low down the table. So 18th, we've got Fulham. 17th, just surviving the drop, we've got Leicester. See, yeah, this is the t obviously the team that won the championship last time out. Leicester, coming back into the Premier League. Realistically, they already have a Premier League sort of calibre squad. Not a high Premier League calibre squad, but they, they'll... It's basically the team that went down with them that's come back up, minus a couple of players here and there. Obviously, Dewsbury Hall's gone off to Chelsea, which would be a big miss for them. But I think they'll be okay. I think they've got the sort of calibre players to not worry too much about not having him. Obviously, they've got um, Daka up front. They've got Vardy still they're playing there. I don't know how he's still playing there. Their defence is, is solid all round, I believe. Their goalkeeper... Don't know much about him, but he obviously did well last year. The midfield might be the little sort of stumbling point, and they probably need a better striker, if I'm being honest. But I feel like they've got a squad good enough to survive in the Premier League this year. Sixteenth, we are going with Nottingham Forest. Yeah, Nottingham Forest, I mean, they're always sort of down in those bottom sort of five, six spaces, aren't they? They're, I don't see that changing at all this year. I, they've, again, they've sold more than they've signed. They've not really brought in any major names. This It's essentially the same squad they had last year. It's, a couple of big injuries will hurt them if they get them through the season, obviously. They're, their goalkeeper's gone. They've got Matt Turner now as, as their sort of star keeper, which I mean he's he's okay, but I don't I don't see him doing enough to keep them in, like keep them in the league. But the rest of the squad I feel will will help that. Obviously Chris Wood up front, I feel like he's probably going to get quite a few goals for them. I think the midfield's actually really quite solid. The defence probably where it lacks a little bit for Nottingham Forest, and yeah, I just. I think it's going to be same old Forest this year. They're going to be bottom five team. And yeah, be lucky to survive, to be honest with you. But I think they'll just about scrape by like, as they normally do. Number 15, we're going Brentford. And now this is Brentford with me as of current day. Ivan Tony is still there. So they're 15th because Ivan Tony's still there. Because with Tony, I feel like they might even finish higher than this. You get Tony scoring, you get Mbemo playing well. I actually think they've got a very, very well-rounded team anyway. Their midfield is solid. Their defence is incredible. I'm actually very surprised that Rico Henry is still there as their defence. Obviously, Flecken in goal. I think they have a solid Premier League team. They don't have a good Premier League team. They have some good players. Which is why I'm putting them lower half of the table. Lower down in the table at 15th. And I think, to be perfectly honest with you, Th Thomas Frank is probably a manager of too much quality to be managing a team like Brentford. If I was a big six club, I would be looking at him very, very closely. Because I think he is a phenomenal manager. And he, what he's done with Brentford is just incredible in the time he's been there. I feel like him making maybe a couple of signings through the rest of the season, or rest of the window rather... He could get them higher than this. I think if he manages to hold on to Tony as well, he could definitely get them higher than this because I feel he's going to have a very good season again. But in my eyes, he, Tony's probably going to go. Don't know where he's going to go, but he's probably going to go. And it's all about what sort of replacement they get. I think 15th sort of a comfortable position to put them in. So yeah, Brentford in 15th. In 14th, we're going... Bournemouth. Yeah, Bournemouth. So obviously we all know Dominic Solanke out the door at Bournemouth, gone off to Tottenham, their, their star player from last season. But I believe, it's not confirmed at time of recording, but Evan Nilsson is signing for them from Porto, who I think is a incredible player. I think if he comes in, he will score goals for fun for them. So I think that is a like-for-like like replacement as well. I think that will be essentially the same goals, amount of goals Solanke scored. I think Evan Nilsson will get around the same. 
maybe not quite as many, but I think they will be fine. They'll cope with the player like Evan Nelson. Again, the rest of the squad, not overly incredible. They're all just solid players. I've, obviously, if they get um, Mama Dashvili, who obviously Liverpool are trying to sign, trying to loan out to Bournemouth, then I think that will improve them no end as well. I think he's an incredible goalkeeper. The defence is okay. They're sort of all your solid, big, strong defenders that you, you're you used to with a team like Bournemouth. The midfield's okay. The attack, I think, is quite good for Bournemouth. And I think, like especially com considering how they did last season, I feel like they're going to have a similar season. I understand why people tend to put these a bit lower down the league. I've seen a lot of ones where they're like just above relegation zone in the sort of 17th, 16th position. I'm going to put them 14th just because I think I just think they're going to do okay. I think they're going to do okay. I think Evan Nilsson's going to be a sign-in, really good sign-in. I think that the, the managers just could get them playing like he did last season. They always seem to pull out a few upsets. So... Yeah, I think Bournemouth 14th. In 13th, we're going Everton. Yeah, Everton. I know, obviously, again, no Onana. Got rid of him. Managed to keep Jared Brantwaite as, as of time of recording, which I think is a phenomenal feat. I don't know how they've got him to agree to stay. Realistically, Everton is not a big enough club for a player like that. He is phenomenal. He's such a good player. They've not made loads of signings that I can name off the top of my head right now. But I think Sean Dyche, with a with a year another year under his belt as Everton manager, I reckon he's going to get that team performing. I reckon Pickford's going to have a good season. Obviously, Brantwaite, another year older, another year more experience. And then we're going to... Everton's going to have just a, a solid season, I think. It's going to be where the goals come from, is, is my concern for Everton. Because Beto, not really getting many goals. Dominic Calvert-Lewin, obviously, more time on the, on the injury bench than on the pitch. There's not too many goal-scoring options for Everton. But... I feel like the rest of the team will sort of bring that together and they will, they'll just win games somehow. They're going to get points from games that they probably shouldn't. Yeah, I just think they're going to be okay. I think they're going to do okay. I think they're going to finish in 13th position. Right, 12th. And now I'm sure there's one team that everyone out there is thinking, where the hell are they? That's right, Southampton, 12th. Yep, this is my biggest call of the season, of this whole episode. My biggest prediction. Southampton 12th. I know what you're thinking. They they came up through the playoffs. They weren't even the best team in the championship. How are they going to get 12th? Well, in my eyes, there's always one team from the promoted three that, that perform well. And I think it's going to be Southampton. I, To be honest with you, I, I don't even really know why. I think they've made some very good signings. I think Britain Diaz coming in. It's, it's incredible. He should have been in the Premier League years ago. I think Roddy Edwards from Peterborough is a fantastic signing to be a centre-back. He probably won't even be a starting centre-back. They've obviously got Harwood Bellis come in from Man City on a full, which I think is incredible. Flynn Downs has come in. So they've, they've essentially kept the squad they had last year, but added a couple of bits here and there, which I think is just going to really strengthen their squad. I think that, that Premier League teams aren't going to be sort of used to the way that they play. I think Southampton are going to be sort of the surprise team. I think they're going to upset a few teams that people don't expect them to. I think they're going to get a few big names, like beat a few big names. I think there could still be a couple more signings on the way in as well. I think Armstrong's going to perform well. I think Britt and Diaz is going to perform well. I think the defence is solid. I think the goalkeeper position may be the, the bit that they need a little help with because Bazunu not strong enough at all, in my opinion. And obviously the other goalkeepers being ageing. and But you never know. It's going to be it's going to be interesting to see. But yeah, that is my sort of standout prediction, my surprise prediction. Southampton, 12th. 
12th, yeah. 11th. And just missing out on the top 10, we have Crystal Palace. Yep, I think, obviously, they had a very, very good end to last season under the new manager. And I feel like he's going to just keep that up. I think he's going to do well. I think he's going to start the season very much how he ended last season with a few wins. He's obviously got kept the core of that team together as, as far as this video. I know Gahey may be going to Newcastle, but at time of recording, he's still there. Obviously, Ezzy being... The, oh, no, not Ezzy, sorry. Elise being the main man who's left, gone to Bayern Munich. It's going to be a big miss, although them signing people like Ismail Saar, who can replace him, I think will replace him very well. Keeping Mateta, who obviously at the end of last season performed like R9, like he was unbelievable, Mateta, in the last sort of five, six games of last season. You could managed to keep Ezzy, very good. They've still got a very solid core midfield. Their defence, obviously, if they can keep Gahey, Gahey and Anderson, phenomenal. They've got a good goalkeeper. They've got good def good defence, good midfield. Mateta up front. I think they're just going to do okay. I think I think the manager's going to get them rolling. I think they're going to maybe sign a couple more players as well that will obviously improve this team here and there. But I think 11th. It just missed out on the top 10, but I think that's a very solid. I think Crystal Palace fans would take that as well. So, yeah, 11th Crystal Palace. In 10th, we're going Brighton. Brighton in 10th, yeah. Obviously, they've, they've had some very, very good good seasons in the past. Uh, I, I see them having an, a good-ish season, but I don't think they're going to sort of live up to the calibre of the past few. I think the sale of Pascal Gross is probably going to do more damage than they first realise. I think, obviously, the rest of the squad they've managed to keep together is good. I think the signings they're making, they're breaking their, breaking their transfer record a couple of times, but I just don't feel the players are worth it, the calibre of the players. They've got Minter from, I think he came from Newcastle, who, again, I'm not really heard of. I mean, obviously, I'm not a scout, whatever. Like, I don't don't know every player. But he's not sort of a stand-up player. And just the fact they've spent almost £40 million on him. I mean, I'm not going to not gonna knock Brighton. Obviously, Brighton signed players you've never heard of and they become absolutely well-beaters. Look at Moises Caicedo and people like that. Like, you just don't know. But I feel like their luck's going to run out a little bit this year. I feel like... I mean, 10th, don't get me wrong, 10th is still a phenomenal finish for Brighton. Like, I think they'll be happy with that. I think they, well, I say they'll be happy. They'll probably want to be back in Europe. But I think 10th is a solid position for them. I really do. Uh, obviously, manager, the new manager in, it's going to take some time for him to get the players playing for him. Obviously, being a very young manager that he is, I just, I don't know how well it's going to gel. A lot of people have Brighton to finish lower. I've even seen Brighton in relegation zones for, for people. But for me, I think 10th. I think 10th is a very, very solid finish for Brighton. Right, 9th now. 9th, and again, this might be a little bit of a surprise one. It might be a little bit of a, a disservice in, in some sort of way. But I'm going Aston Villa in 9th. Yeah, obviously they finished top four this year. Phenomenal, phenomenal performance from them. And I, I don't see any reason they couldn't do it again. The reason I have them in ninth is it's that thing of they're playing Champions League this year. Do they have a squad big enough to have the Champions League squad and the Premier League squad? Because for me, no, they probably don't. Obviously, they've managed to keep the majority of their squad together. They've made some incredible signings in, like, Jan Matson has come in, who I think is one of the best signings of the season so far. I think he will perform incredibly. They've obviously signed Onana from Everton, which I think is a very good signing. A replacement for Douglas Louise, perhaps. I, I think Douglas Louise is the better player. Obviously, he's gone off to Juventus. But I think he'll be good. I think, obviously, Ollie Watkins, if they can get him firing how he was, I think that's going to be good. They've obviously got rid of Diaby, gone to Saudi Arabia. 
which may be a bit of a miss for them. Although Morgan Rogers coming through, whether he has the same sort of season he was having last year, I don't know. Their defence is still solid. I think the reason they will get higher, if they do get higher, is Emmy Martinez. If they keep Emmy Martinez fit, and he performs like he has been the past few years, they could be top four again easily. Emmy Martinez, in my opinion, is top three goalkeeper in the world right now. He is, he is one of my favourite goalkeepers. And I think Aston Villa... Yeah, Aston Villa, I've got... Although I've got them ninth, this, I mean, this sort of top nine, top eight is just... You could put anybody in any position and nobody would really argue with you. Obviously, Aston Villa fans are probably going to argue with me right now, but Unai Emery has obviously got a team that he's built and he's happy with. Ross Barkley came in in the midfield. I don't know how much he's actually going to play. I think he's going to be sort of an off-the-bench sort of player, but I think... I think Aston Villa obviously made some very good signings for the window. I think Aston Villa are gonna gonna perform very well. I just think that the amount of games they're gonna have this year with the with the Champions League and with cups and with Premier League, I just don't see them see them coping. To be honest with you, it's gonna be one of those things like like how um, teams like Burnley have done in the past when the year they got into Europe, they next season finish bottom half. It's just what happens. You can't cope with the amount of games. You don't have a team with the big enough calibre of player that to cope. So yeah, sorry Aston Villa fans, but you are in ninth in my prediction. Okay, in eighth, we're going West Ham. Yeah, West Ham. Again, this is the team I think probably has had the Best transfer window I have seen in a long, long time. They have improved every position I felt they needed to. Obviously, Ariola in goal is still very solid. You didn't really need a goalkeeper anyway. Defensively, Max Kilman coming in, huge signing. Wan Bissaka coming in, huge signing. I think he's going to be sort of the bargain of the, of the window. I think he's going to perform incredibly for them. Um, the midfield wise you've got some incredible players there anyway like I just I think obviously the signing of full Krug as well their attacker I think him letting Bowen then play as a winger is gonna just improve that team no end I think they're just gonna be a, a force this year I really do I think West Ham are gonna be a force I think it's gonna be difficult to beat them Obviously, Tadebo, I didn't even mention Tadebo that they've signed as a centre-back. So, it's just, it's, they've had a window to remember 100%. Let's just hope that those players can all gel for them and they can get get firing and they can start winning games, which I think they will. I think they'll be, they'll be right sort of up there most of the season. I think a couple of injuries here or there will hurt them. But I think an eighth-place finish is a very good finish for West Ham. Sort of on the verge of Europe. I don't know how many spaces England have got this year for European. I think it's seven, so I think that's just missing out by one. But I think West Ham fans would be would be happy with that. Maybe they're expecting a bit more this year due to the signings and the calibre of signings. But I think West Ham eighth is a is a is a firm prediction. I think it's fair. So yeah, we've got West Ham in eighth. Okay, now we're into the top seven. And obviously, I think it's the same top seven that every team, every person who does this in the entire country is going to have the same top seven. And in my seventh position, we're going for Newcastle. Yep, I don't think that will surprise many people. It's sort of the top six and Newcastle, isn't it really? But yeah, Newcastle seventh. I think Isaac is going to have another fantastic season. I'm Honestly, surprised they've managed to keep hold of him. I thought he was going to go somewhere bigger. But he, if he performs, will be good. I think him with Callum Wilson, obviously, as well. They've managed to keep Anthony Gordon also, which I think is a, a huge, huge player that they've managed to keep. Obviously, he was linked with Liverpool and teams like that. He might still go. Obviously, window's not over. But, um, yeah, I think Newcastle have got a very solid team. They've not... Made too many improvements would be my one sort of one sort of thing against them. They've they've not made huge signings to improve their team. They've kept their team, which is good because obviously it's a good team last season. It's just they haven't 
improved it. They're, obviously, they're trying to sign Gahey, which, yeah, good signing. Very good signing, if they can get him in. They've signed a few younger players here and there. It's just, I don't see any of the players they've signed making a difference straight away. Which, I think, is sort of what they need. Because, obviously, to try and improve, you want to get somebody in to improve. Or you, you need to get your players playing better, but... The way Eddie Howe has the team playing, I think they're playing to sort of their their ability, which obviously last season top I think they were top six finish, top seven finish maybe, which I think is exactly where Newcastle will be finishing this year. I think seventh is a good good finish for them, and yeah, I think I think Newcastle fans will be happy because obviously European football. I think obviously they'll want to be a little bit higher, but being realistic, I think Newcastle seventh. In sixth position, we're going for Manchester United. Yeah, again, I think a lot of play, a lot of people who do this probably have Man United in the same sort of position. Sixth, they're still in the top sort of six, but they're very much the bottom of the top six now. They're just, I mean, again, they've made signings. They've made some good signings. That Masrawi to replace Wan Bissaka. Very different style of defender. Obviously, it's how Ten Hag's decided he wants to go with it. De Ligt coming in. Uh, Euro, obviously coming in, but already injured. Typical Man United. Um, yeah, I think they're going to be they're going to be an interesting team. I think Josh Zerksey is going to be going to be a good player. I think he's going to get them some goals this year. I think he's the sort of striker they've been looking for, especially with Hoyland on the on the sidelines for a little while. I think Zerksey can can do the job for them. I think they're, as much as I hate to say this, I think they're probably lacking because of players like Marcus Rashford, who, in my eyes, doesn't seem to want to play. Same with players like Sancho. I think they, if they can build that team around players like Bruno Fernandes and, like, I don't even know, Diogo Dallo, I think they're the sort of players they need to be keeping an eye on. They need to be, they need to be, Building the team around, which I think, I think Ten Hag's doing that. Obviously, he's signing a lot of his old Ajax boys, which you sort of expect. That's a team that he did very, very well with. De Ligt, Masrawi. Obviously, they've got Anthony there. They've got Martinez there. They've got Onana. All the ones that he had at the time. So obviously, he knows these players. He's confident with these players. I think they'll. I think they will perform better this year than they have in the past. I think they'll get back to a sort of. A sort of Man United style of play that people want to watch because I mean the past few years nobody wants to watch a Man United game. Nobody wants to watch a Man United game. But I think obviously with the new new attack, obviously Garnacho as well. I think he's phenomenal. Manu phenomenal. Some of their young players they've got coming through. You you be scared of Man United in a few years. You will. They will be right back up there if they can keep these players going the way they are. But yeah, I think Onana, still there, very, very much weak spot. They have a goalkeeper that cannot save. That's all I'm going to say, really. He 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 can't. He can't use his hands. He's, they've signed him because he's good with his feet. I get that. But you need a keeper that can stop the ball going in the net. Onana can't do that. The defence, obviously, they've brought in to come in front of him. Makes sense. Delict and um, Tadibo, uh, Tadibo, Yoro. And obviously they've still got players like Maguire and that and Martinez. And I think the defence is more solid now, which hopefully will put less pressure on Onana. But yeah, I think United are not going to finish much higher than sixth. And I would not be surprised if Ten Hag ends up not being there at the end of the season. But yeah, sixth, Man United. In fifth position, we're going for Tottenham. Tottenham, fifth. Ange Postacoglu, obviously having a season to to sort of stamp his name into the English Premier League. He did well last season. He's obviously not made that many signings last season for to bring in players for Tottenham. This year, he's again not made many signings, but he's made good signings. Dominic Solanke, especially. That's one thing that realistically last year, if you said to me, who's Tottenham striker? Who's that, who's that striker, that out-and-out -out striker? I would I would struggle to give you one. Obviously, Son is there. More of a winger. 
Richarlison's there. Not not a striker in my eyes. He's sort of like the second striker. He's the player to play behind the striker. Who else have they even got, really? Who have they got? Kulisevsky? Winger. Like, so I think Solanke coming in, giving them that sort of strength and that power up front, I think that's going to be the difference this year for Tottenham. I was so close to putting these in a top four spot. So, so close. But... I think they're just going to miss out, but I, I, I honestly, you watch Solanke. I think he's going to be going to be a player. I think he's going to be a player to to reckon with. He's gonna he's gonna get some goals and he's gonna get a lot of goals for Tottenham, especially if they can play in in the way that that they need to play to fit him in. Obviously, the midfield still solid. If they can keep Madison fit as well, I think that is going to be a big difference maker. The defence is still phenomenal. They've not really changed much to do with the defence, which I don't think they needed to. They've got good centre-backs now. They've got Udogi. They've got Poro. Uh, the goalkeeper, Vicario, obviously. He's a very, very solid goalkeeper. I I just think they're going to they're gonna do well. I think the signing of Solanke is really going to make a difference for them this year. And I think they're going to be finishing fifth spot. But they will be pushing on next season. I, I can always guarantee it. Fourth position then, the top four. Obviously, you know the team's making out the top four by process of elimination. Who's going to finish in fourth, though? It's going to be Chelsea. Yeah, I think they're going to be there. I think they're going to be in the top four, Chelsea. I think they're going to they're going to perform extremely well. I think they're going to be so much better than they were last year under Enzo Maresca. Obviously, Cole Palmer getting firing from the start, which I feel he will. I don't think he's going to drop off at all. I think he's going to be the sort of the player of the season again. They've made some good signings this year, not just big money signings. Obviously, transfer window's not over. They're still in for Osserman, which I think will be a very, very good signing if they can get him in. They've obviously got some players coming in. They had Dewsbury Hall coming in, which I think solidifies the midfield very, very nicely. Tossing in at the centre-back from Fulham, who's a very good signing. They've got about 87 goalkeepers. So, I mean, you pick one of them, I'm sure they'll be fine. Um... Yeah, they've just they've just made some good signings. They've made some good sales as well to keep their money troubles sort of behind them. Because obviously FFP will be right on their backs with the amount of money they're spending. But yeah, I think they've they've done some good good business. I think obviously you want that out and out striker Jackson though. I do feel if if they have to start with Jackson, I actually feel he's going to have a better season. I reckon he could be in the sort of like fifteen goals sort of season. He obviously didn't perform like that last season, but this year I feel he's he's had a year under his belt. He's going to be a bit more confident. He's going to, if you can get him firing from the start, I think I think he'll be the player for you. But yeah, I don't see him finishing much higher than fourth. I have to say, I think mean, fourth for Chelsea fans right now, I think they'd bite your hand off. I think they would, considering how they've done the past sort of three or four seasons, they've not been anywhere near that sort of caliber. Palmer, obviously the difference last year, getting them back up to sort of the positions they were hoping to be in. There, Yeah, I think their defence is extremely solid. I think the midfield is good. I think Palmer being the standout player in the entire squad. I think the attack needs a little bit of help. Obviously, you do need that striker perhaps. But yeah, I think Chelsea are going to do well. I think they're going to finish fourth. Right, top three. I think it's the same top three for every single person in the country as well. But uh, mine might be a little bit different. Mine might be a little bit controversial. Because I'm going to have Manchester City third. That's right. The champions last year. The team that have won it four years in a row. The team that nobody can stop. Nobody can stop them. They're going to finish third. I just feel that... I mean, they might get deducted points for FFP breaches but even without that I feel they're going to finish third and the reason basically I just I don't how long can they keep it up how long they're not they're all of them are getting older obviously age means nothing really it's just you start slowing down a little bit but I don't see Kevin De Bruyne having the same sort of season he's had the past 10 I don't think he'll be anywhere. Well, he won't. He he'll be close, 
but I don't think he'll be the sort of 20 assists sort of player that he has been. I think Haaland, he's going to score goals, obviously. He's the best striker in the world at the moment, but I don't think he's going to score enough goals to carry the team all the way through. Even if he scores sort of the 30 goals, I feel that they might not be enough. I think, obviously, they haven't really done any different signings. They've got that guy in from Girona, but nothing else. <clears throat> obviously, Edison in goal, solid. I know that they're probably going to look to move on from him relatively soon. The defence is still solid. It's, it is solid. I think there are, there are definitely points where teams will learn to break that defence down. The midfield, especially with Rodri missing the first sort of couple of weeks, maybe month of the season, might hurt them a little bit. I mean, the midfield, other than Rodri, obviously you've got De Bruyne, you've got Kovacic, you've got Foden, you've got people like that. I feel Phil Foden will not perform anywhere near as well as he did last season. The pressure will be too high on him. Obviously, he got a player of the season last year. He's not going to have that sort of season again. No way. No way. And then, obviously, the big man up front, Haaland. Yeah, he's going to be good, as he always will be. But not as high as I thought. Not as high as I th as as past, past years. I don't think he's going to have the, the sort of supply. I think there's going to be other players on the team that are going to be more inclined to, to make a name for themselves this year, perhaps. Yeah, I just... I feel they're going to drop off slightly. And by slightly, they're still going to finish third. They're still going to be right in there all the way to the end of the season. I just feel that the other two teams that I've got above them are just going to be a little bit better than them this year. I really do. So, yeah. Controversial one, but Man City, third. Second. Now, obviously, the top two. You've got my team, Liverpool, and Arsenal. Now... Obviously, my team, I'd love to say, yeah, Liverpool winning the league this year, 100% under new manager. Whoa, on slot, more like Pep Guardiola. No, Liverpool are going to finish second. As much as I hate to say it, I'd love them to win it. They're going to finish second. Uh, I think Arnslot's going to come in. I think, to start with, he may struggle a little bit. I think we've got a fortunate sort of start to the season, playing some lesser teams. But I feel he's going to be, he's going to be good. He's going to be good. He's going to get the team together. He's going to really go for it. And he's going to he's going to perform. He's going to perform well. Obviously not made any signings as of time recorded. Not made any signings at all. But then does he need to? Because Liverpool have a solid team. Very solid team. They have a team that won the Premier League two, three years ago. Whatever it was. So he doesn't necessarily need to. Well, three years ago. Five years ago now it was, wasn't it? He doesn't need to make signings. He's got a very good squad to build around. Obviously, you've got players like Harvey Elliott, Curtis Jones, younger players coming through. You've got Trent Alexander-Arnold staying in the team that he can either use as a right-back or bring him into the midfield, put Connor Bradley at right-back. You've got Allison, one of the top goalkeepers in the world. You've got Van Dijk still there, one of the best defenders in the world. You've got, obviously, he probably does need a centre-back partner. To, to solidify that role, you've got Canate, obviously very good player. You've got Gomez, very good player. You've got got loads of other other good defence. Robertson, of course, haven't even mentioned him. He's phenomenal as well. Defence, solid. Same sort of solid we've had all the time. The, the spot we needed to fill, really, was the number six role, with Endo being the best sort of player we have there at the minute. I mean, I, don't, I rate Endo very, very highly. I think Endo is a fantastic signing. For someone I'd never heard of to come in, Replace a player like Jordan Henderson, that was obviously the club captain, the the sort of namestay of top, of Liverpool. Um, yeah, Endo came in did very very well. I just don't feel he's the sort of star caliber player that Liverpool need in that position. We just need that little bit of improvement there. But other than that, we've got McAllister going to be firing this season. I hundred percent doubt, like hundred percent promise you, he's going to do well. Sobersly again going to perform. Very well. Curtis Jones, Harvey Elliott, Ryan Gravenberch. I just think the calibre of players we have as midfielders. Yes, we may need to improve in a couple of areas. I think that's enough for now. And then it comes to the attack. Nunez, 
probably going to have a good season. Let's be honest. He's probably going to get that central role. Probably going to score quite a few goals. Mo Salah, although I feel he's not going to perform to the sort of standard he has done the past few years, he's still Mo Salah. He's still one of the best players in the world. He's still going to perform incredibly well. And yeah, I think it's going to be going to be an interesting season for him. I think we'll see how, how he sort of handles it. And then obviously you've got Jota, who despite his injury record, he's a phenomenal, phenomenal player. I think he'll be the sort of player that comes off the bench more than starts and he'll make differences off the bench. And then obviously the final two, you've got Luis Diaz, who, I mean, honestly, give it two, three years, he will be the name of Liverpool. Like He'll be the Mo Salah of Liverpool when Mo Salah's not there anymore. He's He is one of the players that I personally love watching. I think he is incredible. He just does so much with the ball that people don't even realise. He scores goals, he gets assists, he's he's just a, a player. He's just a player. If we can keep him fit, I think he'll he'll be a difference maker. And then the last man, obviously, Cody Gakpo, who I believe is going to be the breakout star this season. You've got a new manager coming in, a Dutch manager coming in. I get that probably means nothing, but it probably also means he knows Gakpo. And Gakpo, the performance he put on at the Euros, second to none. One of the top three players at the Euros, by far. Like, you can't really argue many other players that were better than him. Musiala, probably. Like, couldn't tell you many more. Yamal, perhaps. But yeah, Gakpo. Good, coming off a really, really good Euros. Confidence high. Get him in the Premier League. New manager, something to prove. I think he's going to do well. I think he's going to get lots and lots of goals. Or if not, he's going to get lots and lots of chances and lots and lots of assists. And I think he's going to be, even though he may not start the first game, he's going to make a difference coming off the bench or he's going to be good enough to get himself into that for first 11. And yeah, I just feel second place for Liverpool purely because I feel like Arsenal are going to do better. Right, and that brings this very long episode to an end with number one, the winners of the Premier League this season, in my predictions, Arsenal. I hate to say it, I really do. I mean, Arsenal, they annoy me <laughs> in the nicest way. Not as much as a team like Man City and Man United would if they won it, but I think Arsenal just growing from what they did last year. They've they've not made many signings. They've got Calafiori on in that as a defender who yeah he's he's one of the players of the tournament as well isn't he like he's 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 incredible he's going to make a difference to that defense if they play him at left back or center back i don't think he'll get in at center back obviously they've got the two best center back partnership in the world raya coming in on a full makes sense the midfield still very very solid if they sign Mikel Marino, which I know they're linked with, I think that is going to improve it no end. I think that is he is a phenomenal player. And then obviously you've got the front, the attack, Saka coming on from a good Euros. I think he'll do really, really well. I think obviously you've got Trossard, you've got Martinelli, you've got Havertz, you've got Jesus, who if Jesus can keep fit, I think he might get a few goals more this season. I just I feel they've got the best all-round team. They've got the best defence in the league by a country mile, especially if last year's anything to go by. Declan Rice, Bukayo Saka, two players that the Euros performed incredibly. I feel like they're just going to keep keep getting better. The the thing for them might be where the goals come from, but I feel Havertz going to be okay. I feel the goals are just going to come from sort of everywhere. It's not going to be one out and out player that scores. Loads of goals. They're not going to have like a 30 goal a season player like Man City will. They're just going to get goals all round. They might have three 15 goals a player a season. Uh, three 15 goals a season players. <laughs> get it right. So yeah, I think Arsenal, it's, it's finally their time. It's finally their time. I think Arsenal fans are, are expecting it this year. I think they're building under Arteta. I think he's, he's a good manager. He's a very good manager. I think obviously learning from Pep. It's going to be interesting. It's going to be interesting, Teason. Let me know down in the comments, guys. How do you think it's going to go? Do you think Arsenal are going to win the league like I do? Do you think Man City are going to win the league again? Probably. 
And uh, what do you think of my bottom three? Obviously, only one of the bottom of the promoted teams going down in the bottom three in my predictions. And obviously, my surprise being Southampton getting right up there. Obviously, I imagine a lot of you probably disagree with that. Do you? Who, what do you think is going to be the surprise of the season, guys? So let me know in the comment down below. What team do you think is going to finish higher or lower than than where? But they sort of expected to. Do you think Brighton are going to get relegated? I've seen that before. Do you think Man United are going to finish 16th? Let me know. Let me know, guys. Thanks very much for watching. I'll see you next time. Bye.